When it first popped on the scene, cryptocurrency was considered a risky alternative investment, and many say that hasn't changed. Something that has, its value. Six years ago, on this very day, you could buy a single Bitcoin for around $244. But today, it is over $55,000. Not everyone buys Bitcoin, but many are engaged in the high-stakes effort to create them through a mind-bending process of electronic mining. And that's where virtual currency may create real-world concerns for the environment. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Biradelli has the story. Good morning. The opportunity to make big money is now attracting huge investments to industrial scale Bitcoin mining. With thousands of supercomputer mining machines and enormous energy demand, so much energy that some companies are using power plants to fuel their operations. But critics fear that may have significant environmental consequences. It's stunning. You could just be driving along the highway and see a magnificent waterfall. It's, it's spectacular here. Yvonne Taylor's family has lived along the shores of Seneca Lake for seven generations, an idyllic spot nestled in New York's picturesque Finger Lakes region. We've got waterfalls, gorges, water to swim in, fresh water to drink, an abundance of agriculture, wine, tourism. It's a piece of heaven right here. But now she says her piece of heaven is threatened. Taylor is a leader of Seneca Lake Guardian, an environmental watchdog engaged in a battle over this once shuttered power plant. The plant named Greenwich Generation lay dormant for more than five years. It was converted from coal to natural gas and fired back up in 2017 by a private investment firm with the intent to supply power to the grid. Now, in addition to supplying power, the company has an industrial scale Bitcoin mining business on the property, an operation that's been growing. Recently, the number of mining machines has doubled from around 7,000 to over 15,000. According to an SEC filing by Greenwich Generation, in March, the plant powered 19 megawatts of mining capacity. The document shows they expect that to more than quadruple by the end of 2022. Now, producing power requires millions of gallons of water to be drawn from the lake to help cool the process. That water is then permitted to be sent back into Seneca Lake, measurably warmer than it was when it came in. And some residents worry the potentially warmer water may disturb the balance of the ecosystem. I feel like we are stewards of the land. Our roots run deep here. Tina Hazlitt's family has owned this farm on Seneca Lake since 1852. There's no evidence the warm water outflow is causing environmental damage now, but she fears for the future. What Greenwich is doing threatens our lake, it threatens our water, and for me that threatens my grandchildren. But Greenwich disagrees. In a series of emails with CBS News, a Greenwich spokesperson says the town has approved of the company's site plan. Greenwich is in full compliance with all of its permits. And there's no evidence of environmental harm. But Hazlitt says, given Greenwich's plan to grow their Bitcoin business, more study is crucial. We need to throw up the red flags and say, slow down. Let's investigate this. Let's look into what could really happen to our water, happen to our air, uh, as a result of the growth of Bitcoin mining. But why does Bitcoin mining require so much energy that it pays to own a power plant? Because every Bitcoin transaction activates thousands of supercomputing mining machines, all competing against each other to solve puzzling mathematical problems, each vying to be the first to validate that transaction and in return win new Bitcoin. More machines and cheaper power means more profit. So for power plants not operating at full capacity, mining can be an attractive new revenue stream. But the impacts aren't isolated to the Finger Lakes region. Emissions from the burning of natural gas contribute to climate change. And advocates are concerned the floodgates are about to open, to open back up shuttered power plants across the nation. Outside of the state of New York, there are many, many more of these plants. Hundreds. And we met former Cornell University professor and natural gas expert Tony Ingrafia just a finger lake away, surrounded by the sounds of the university's famous clock tower. There are two other plants that are now targeted in New York State to quickly open up. He says using power plants to mine Bitcoin 
raises an ethical concern because of emissions of carbon dioxide and methane leakage, which is common along the supply chain leading to the plant. Methane is, over the short term, 100 times more potent than CO2. The UN says the best lever we have to meet our Paris goals is to reduce methane emissions now. Firing up Bitcoin mining across the country for private enterprise without regard to social good is a really bad thing to be doing. We're at the very, very leading edge of this phenomenon of cryptocurrency mining by burning natural gas. It's going to get worse. It's a trend that is ramping up. Bitcoin miners are making deals to utilize or even purchase power plants in Western New York, Montana, and Pennsylvania, just to name a few. And critics say the Bitcoin industry's carbon emissions are already immense, larger than the total emissions of Sweden and Switzerland combined. In fact, a recent study found that Bitcoin mining alone has the potential to catapult us past the warming targets set by the Paris Agreement. If you look at all the energy consumption of Google, Amazon, Facebook combined, this is more energy than all of them. Anna Kellis is talking about Bitcoin mining. She's a New York State Assembly member who says the industry used to be lucrative for the little guy. Now it's tougher to compete. So mining Bitcoin has become an economy of scale. Yes. Absolutely. You need to have as many computers as possible, and you need those computers online every single second of every single day. She worries using power plants for industrial scale mining will cause an escalation of emissions that may undermine New York's ambitious climate goals. So she's proposing a moratorium on this type of operation. If they can work their way through all the regulations in New York State, which has some of the highest regulations in the country, it really sets a precedent. Together, Kellis and concerned residents like Avon Taylor. We are any town USA, and this could happen in any community. Are hoping to get ahead of this burgeoning Bitcoin phenomenon before they fear it gets out of control. We have to nip this in the bud or else everything else we're doing to fight climate change will be undermined. Greenwich told CBS News they have purchased carbon credits to offset their CO2 emissions from the plant. Now, their five-year air permit is up for renewal now. In an August letter to New York's Department of Environmental Conservation, Greenwich said that it is in compliance with New York's greenhouse gas emissions targets established by the new climate law. New York's DEC says Greenwich's application has not yet demonstrated compliance with those requirements. DEC has not made a final determination on the permit. Public hearings are planned, and the DEC is accepting public comments on the renewal through October 22nd. And they've asked for more information from Greenwich. As for cryptocurrency's carbon footprint, there may be a way to significantly reduce emissions. The second largest cryptocurrency, Ethereum, just announced it's changing the way that they verify transactions. They say this will reduce emissions by over 99%. A lot to think about, Jeff. Thank for you sure. very much.